Hello, it's Phil here. It's Thursday. Again, and we're live for another Thursday Q&A Live. I'm losing my voice. I've been doing a lot of speaking today. Been recording a lot of lessons and we've been using the gear that you see here, the uh, Den and DJ Prime 4. Uh, we've been using this and we've been teaching all kinds of stuff uh, about the controller and about mixing, but also about using the engine software that it comes with and that uh, you use to prepare your music with this. Uh, and so we've, uh, well, I've been talking a lot, so I do, uh, do apologise if my voice starts to creak a little bit uh, in today's show. Uh, but anyway, this is a live programme from the Digital DJ Tips studios, and it is me for the next 45 minutes to an hour just helping you with your DJ questions. We're live on Facebook, we're live on Twitch. Hello, Twitch family. We are live on YouTube, and wherever you ask your question, we'll try our hardest to get to you and to answer it. As you can see, we've not only got the uh, the Den and DJ Prime 4, but I've also got uh, I've also got the uh, Pioneer gear here set up on our on our new kind of bench in the corner. We've got the S5 as well. Actually, none of it's plugged in at the moment. I won't pretend it is. But anyway, I've got that gear here that we could talk about, um, and also surrounding me, uh, as you would have seen, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we've got some Adam nice Adam Audio speakers here to talk about. Uh, so look, whatever it is you need help with that's uh, bothering you in your DJing or gear or getting music or learning how to use some of the, the techniques that uh, the DJs use on their gear uh, or performing, playing out, live streaming, or just getting yourself noticed. Whatever it is that you need help with, give us a shout. I'm the head tutor at Digital DJ Tips. We've uh, taught over 33,000 people in the time that we've been doing this, which is since 2010. So we've had a little bit of experience helping people whose hobby is this great thing that we call DJ. So that is us. What about you? How are you doing, folks? Uh, I will uh, say some early hellos to some of our uh, family who are joining us today. And in fact, I'm gonna move my laptop in here, just a little bit closer. That's nice. Uh, hello to Mixmaster G, to Housemaster J, to Robert in the Netherlands, uh, to Liquid Metal in the US, uh, to, to Maria Lee, or Maria Lee uh, is in uh, Twitchland. Uh, hello to Kekeshia, DJ Ginormous, and uh, Adrian Christian on a rainy Thursday in the Philippines. Uh, Sarah is in sunny Barnsley in Yorkshire, United Kingdom. Uh, and hello to uh, Dobix, who just says hello, mate. Nathan's over there on uh, Nathan's over there on Facebook. Says poor Phil must have swallowed a dictionary. He has a th thesaurus throat. Can't even say it. Uh, Davey is up latish in Australia. Lucky to have a public holiday tomorrow. Hi all. Yeah, you are indeed lucky. Hi Phil and crew. Says says Dave. Um, and this is our first question. Uh, and this is uh, about the controller that I have here in front of me. Dave says, I've got a Prime 4. This is Den and DJ's Prime 4, their flagship standalone DJ system. I've got a Prime 4, but I'm looking for a smaller device to use at parties and events over Christmas. Can you help me? Well, if you are uh, a friend of the website or if you're a student, you'll know that the, the smaller version of that thing that I really like is the one I've actually got down here, which is the Den and DJ Prime Go. The Prime Go is a lovely little device. Let me just take the deck saver off of it so I can show it to you in all of its glory. Tuck that down there. So this is great because it basically uses exactly the same technology as the one I've got here, but as you can see, it's tiny compared to it. Uh, it's got a battery, so you can charge it up and play for three or four hours without worrying. The screen's good, and it's well made, and it's small. Uh, it's professional, but small. Uh, and I love this little controller, this little um, DJ system. I think it's fantastic. I've DJed an awful lot on it. There's no speaker built in, by the way. It's the only thing that does lack. Um, but everything else that you need uh, is built in, including Wi-Fi, just like this. Both got Wi-Fi on them. Uh, but on this one, it's brilliant because you can connect it, for instance, to uh, your phone, uh, and then you can DJ on Tidal, um, Beat Source and Beatport directly over the air, Literally, so you don't even need any music. You can just tether it to your phone or to any nearby Wi-Fi network and get DJing on batteries. Lovely little thing. So the Denon Prime Go. Of course, the problem at the moment um, is getting your hands on DJ gear. Uh, so I don't know how available any of this stuff is. Uh, I would say 
give it a go, see what you can find. Uh, but I hope that's helpful. That was an easy first question. We are not only here to talk about gear, by the way, you want to talk about music, preparing your music library, gathering music, where to get it from. Um, we've just covered uh, this exact subject actually on the Digital DJ Tips website. We spent a little bit of time recently talking about music, where to get music and so on. So let me just show you uh, where to find those articles. If you go to digitaldjtips.com, the world's biggest DJ Tech website, uh, head to digitaldjtips.com and click on the latest at the top or click on the tutorials section. Uh, either will get you to a page that looks similar to this. And uh, quite recently we've been talking about music, so we've got where DJs get their music in 2022, kind of a, an article that goes over all of this, uh, and then talks in quite depth as well uh, in the accompanying articles about record uh, shops, online download stores, and also uh, where DJs get um, join up with download pools and so on. So that's all uh, here, it's all listed in this section. Uh, so do go take a look at that. And remember, if you want to use the search bar, so for instance, I'll click in search and type download for download pools. 11 best music download stores are there for 2022. Uh, you'll also find the best DJ download pools for 2022, loads and loads of similar articles as well. So do take a look. There's about five or 6,000 articles on Digital DJ Tips. It's an incredible resource and it's totally free. So take a look there. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, whatever it is you want help with, it doesn't have to just be DJ gear. Uh, we're happy to talk about anything. Uh, so my next live question then is coming for, thank you for that question, by the way, Dave. Good one. I'm sure that's helped other people as well. Uh, Michael says, I have a Denon DJ Prime 4 uh, and I sometimes get judder on the waveforms. Is this normal? Not sure. I guess it depends what you're doing with the device, but if, as long as it sounds all right, I think uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, so uh, this is, hello to Jacob, hello to Dennis. Nice to see you again, Dennis, my friend. Always nice to see you. Um, hello to DJ Mercy, uh, who says, uh, how do I use tr the Tractor Control S8 with uh, Virtual DJ? So the Tractor Control SA is an interesting controller. They don't make it anymore, um, but it is a DJ controller for Tractor software, unu uh, unsurprisingly. But the thing with the S8, and the thing, the reason they don't make it anymore, and the reason it's not, it's not a big thing for them, uh, is that it didn't have any jog wheels. So this was a, uh, this was a, a controller that the whole point was you weren't meant to use jog wheels with it. You were just meant to kind of DJ with it and use, um, use, uh, you know. Uh, beat grids and, and cue points and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't think it particularly uh, took people's, uh, uh, caught people's um, imagination because DJs like jog wheels, it turned out. Uh, but nonetheless, it had its moment in the sun. Uh, this is the Tractor Control S8. And it was in a way ahead of its time because it had the ability to DJ with stems, and that's what the little four faders you can see on the left there and on the right there are. You could DJ with drums and music and vocals and bass lines separately, but you needed separate files to do it. And that was where it all went wrong because no one wanted to make separate special DJ files for DJs to DJ that way. Now, of course, DJ gear has got built in um, stem separation or rather DJ software has or rather virtual DJ and DJ Pro AI do because they're the only two pieces of DJ software that feature that as of now. And so that kind of controller would have been great for that. Uh, and indeed you can map it to virtual DJ. Now it might actually work out of the box with virtual DJ um, because it's just, uh, I think it's probably worth just plugging it in and seeing uh, because it tends to be that virtual DJ is compatible with most DJ controllers. So do take a look at, at that, it might just work. But if not, it will be mappable. It's so whether you can get the screens to do nice stuff because that's got some nice screens built in as well. Uh, but I'll just plug it in and have a go, to be honest. Uh, okay, so we're taking questions live on Facebook, on YouTube and on Twitch. Facebook's the best place, by the way, just because the questions remain underneath the recording of the video. So my team and I can get back to you, even if we can't uh, answer live. Um, Chris Jean or Christine, sorry, Christine, uh, anybody able to get the bloody mic to work on the Prime 4? It's driving me crazy. Uh, whoa. 
That's better. Uh, anyone able to get the mic to work on the Prime 4? Uh, I don't understand what your problem is. It just works. So um, maybe there's an issue on your particular Prime 4 because there's nothing unusual about the microphones here. So uh, yeah, maybe there's just an issue on your particular one or let us know a bit more information, Christine, and we'll try and help you with that. So what is the best USB pen drive to use? This always gets lots and lots of, uh, lots and lots of uh, different opinions. Uh, and it's something we will be running around up of soon. So the one that we use is this little one here, the Stealth Survivor. I can't do a zoom. I might be able to do a close up on that. Should we try and do a close up on that? Ooh, look at that. That's not too bad, is it? It's not too bad as far as close ups go. A little bit dark. Anyway, little Stealth Survivor. It's got a piece that goes over the top of it there and it's like a little tin can. Um, but apparently these aren't very good with Pioneer DJ gear, not sure why. Um, the little SanDisk ones, SanDisk tend to be the ones that uh, I see most DJs using. Um, so, uh, but as I say, we'll be, co we'll be covering uh, this subject soon because it's something people keep asking us about. So keep an eye on the website for that one. Um, so thanks for the question. Uh, I hope you feel better, Phil, says William. Oh, there's nothing wrong with me. I just, uh, I just literally talked and talked and talked on camera today. Uh, and also, I know what it was. Let me let you into a little bit of a secret about how we do these live streams. Um, so I'm gonna show you now the, so on our, on our, um, on our, like in our studio, you see this box here, it's just kind of hidden behind this speaker. This box here, it's our switcher and it lets me switch between not only the different cameras but different views and so on um, that you see when we're live but also it's what we use in our in our lessons as well when we're, when we're presenting lessons and it lets me do things like well you saw me doing it then uh, when I wanted to, to jump to the um, uh, to show people the screen on this particular DJ system here. We've got a camera there that lets me show people the screen and the overheads um, and the, the equipment over there uh, and uh, you know the two views of me and all that. It's all switched by that switcher. But that switcher doesn't only do that, it also does all the audio. And we have a control panel for it that is on this computer here. So this computer here, when I'm showing you pictures and stuff like that, um, it's coming from that computer uh, here. But this computer here also uh, has all your comments. There's all your comments coming in live. Uh, but also it has the controls for the switcher. And so this is what they look like. Um, and in this control panel, you can see at the moment my voice there, nice and loud, but not too loud. Uh, it's got um, all these kind of controls here. There's a compressor there that's kicking in at the moment and making sure that my voice stays loud without going uh, to zero dB. And we were messing with this today and we spent about half an hour messing with it to try and get the settings exactly how we wanted it so that um, you know, so that this is as loud as anything you see on YouTube and Facebook. And you have to be pretty aggressive to get it like that. Uh, and the reason we did that was, uh, as I say, to get it so it sounds good on streaming services. But unfortunately, what it meant was I had to do an awful lot of shouting. I was like, like literally, okay, Phil, speak as loud as you can. And I'd be like, saying something very loud, I'm not gonna do it now because my throat hurts. Um, and then shouting and then cough, deliberately coughing and say, like, make the kind of loudest noise you'd ever make and we'll see if you distort the system. So I was, and that's thinking back, that's probably, <laughs> probably why I've got a sore throat. Um, anyway, bit of background there for uh, the way things work here. Uh, let's grab another question. Um, this is from Charles and this is a really good question. So uh, one good thing about this unit that I've got here uh, and other DJ units that run Engine DJ, so the Newmark Mix Stream and the other Prime units, uh, is that you can use streaming services. So you can plug in here Tidal, BeatSource, Beatport, and SoundCloud Go Plus and DJ straight over Wi-Fi with streaming services. Now, a couple of those services, Beatport and BeatSource, you pay more money and they let you take the music offline. So in other words, you don't need an internet connection to DJ with the streaming service. You can say, I've built a playlist for tonight's set and you can press a button and it will bring that offline and then you can go and turn up and DJ with that music from that streaming service without needing the internet which is great, but unfortunately it doesn't work on standalones. It only works with Serato and uh, Recordbox and so on. It doesn't work on standalone systems. It doesn't work at all on these. Um, and I really wish it would. You know, there's no reason why you can't just pop a USB in there and then say, you know, keep offline. And the, because the music's not gonna play on anything else, it's encoded that way. Um, so Charles's question was exactly that. Will offline lockers ever be able to be exported 
uh, to USB. Um, I've cancelled my subscription to Beatport because I can't export my offline lockers to USB and I don't want to use my laptop when playing out. So yeah, you know, imagine if you could do that in Rekordbox and then play in uh, the, 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 you know, play with your CDJ 3000s just by plugging in a USB with streaming music. At the moment, it's not possible. You know, I do think it will be coming. I honestly think it's going to be coming. It's just a matter of time, but it's just not something you can do at the moment, uh, unfortunately. Um, so DJ Son of Ibiza is just giving uh, some love to the Den and DJ Prime 4, uh, which we haven't uh, had out for a while, actually, but uh, I am doing uh, some filming with this at the moment. Uh, and the filming is actually for our new course, which is coming at the beginning of November. Uh, it's the biggest course that we've made at Digital DJ Tips in-house for many years now. Uh, and it is called Mixing for Mobile and Wedding DJs. And it's all about upping your game if you're a mobile or wedding or event DJ and mixing like club DJs mix, like the best DJs mix, like Jazzy Jeff, like DJ Angelo, like uh, Jason Janai in the US and, uh, and people like that. And so the, the point is that nowadays when you're DJing at a wedding, or at a birthday party, or at a corporate event, the people who are getting married, the people who are at those events, the employees, the managers and stuff, they were brought up with mixing. They were brought up with DJs. They went to EDM shows. They, they don't want to hire a DJ who mumbles into the microphone and fades every track into every other track. It's not acceptable anymore. And the irony is, the real irony is, it's easier for EDM and house and techno and club and cool and underground and resident DJs, much easier for those people to mix than it is for the poor old mobile event wedding DJ because the poor old mobile wedding event DJ has got to mix every style of music from 1950s Bo Diddley tracks right up to the very, very latest, you know, mumble rap and dubstep and everything in between. And they've got to do that to keep several generations happy on, on any given dance floor. And so to be able to properly mix that stuff is a real skill, but the best DJs can do it. And if you can become one of the best DJs doing that, you can command much, much higher rates because people will want you. Because, you know, today's couples getting married, today's people booking corporate events in HR departments, they're not stupid. They're on Instagram, they're checking out your little videos you're posting, they're checking out your skills, and they're finding the DJs who aren't gonna let them down, who aren't gonna have everyone going, oh God, here we go again, as you mumble into, not you, uh, as you mumble into your microphone and uh, blend another track like this slowly into the next one, you know. So, you know, there's a big gap there to teach people who think they can't do it, that it's possible. And it is possible. These skills aren't hard, it's just no one's ever shown a generation and a type of mobile DJ. So our new course, Mobile um, and Wedding Mixing, is um, is gonna be covered in that course and it's we're having an awful lot of fun making it. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to dig out the Whitney Houston tracks and the Ed Sheeran tracks and, uh, and figure out uh, you know, ways of teaching uh, how, how to mix between this stuff. So that's coming up at, um, in November, and that's actually why we've got this out, because I've been making training, we've been making training on Tractor and Rekordbox and Serato uh, and um, USB Pioneer gear, and also the Denon gear as well, just trying to make sure that, uh, that, that we show you it's not the gear, it's the skills. So the, the training is spread over all the gear we've got. So that's uh, the reason for that. Right, so, uh, this is a great question. I don't have the answer to this one, but maybe someone does. Uh, is there a company who make in-ear protection to use with headphones? Says DJ Stu C. In-ear protection to use with headphones. So let's unpack this. The reason you want to wear in-ear protection is to reduce the volume of the music to saving your ears when you're DJing. The in-ear protection that DJs tend to like is something called musicians' earplugs or attenuating earplugs. And they work differently to like the foam things you ram in your ears that you buy in the chemist. The foam things that you ram in your ears that you buy in the chemist just make everything go muffled, right? Go really muffled, like, like the mobile DJs who don't mix. Um, so you don't want that, right? You need clarity, you need it to cut through. So what they do is attenuate the sound. They turn it all down from the lowest lows to the highest highs. You just hear it quieter. And the way they do that, to not get technical about it, to give it in plain English is, they make the hole in your ear smaller. That's it. They, they, they go in your ear and they give you a smaller hole. So less sound gets in, but you get a bit of everything. And most of that type of earplug will work fine with headphones because they're almost 
invisible, they're completely in your ear. So there's no reason at all why you can't do that and have your headphones on the go at the same time. That said, if you wear your headphones all the time when you're DJing, there's no need to. Just keep your headphones turned down low and make sure that they're nicely insulating. They've got good pads. So basically, when you put them on, everything sounds muffled, right? If you've ever tried to do a Zoom call or something with full headphones on, it's not right, is it? You can't hear your own voice. That's what you want. As long as your headphones do that, then they're gonna give you quite a lot of protection from sound. So you don't need to wear earplugs if you're gonna keep them on all the time. But if you take them on and off, then yes, possible. Another thing you can do is wear in-ear monitors, posh word for basically um, earbuds, but very good ones, which are designed to keep all the rest of the noise out and then let you control the volume in your ears. And the reason they're good is that in-ear monitors, you tend to keep them in for the whole set. They're too fiddly to take in and out. So you put them in, everyone else stays out your way and you DJ for your hour and a half or whatever. Um, but thank you for the question. And if anyone's got any recommendations, if anyone's actually using musician's earplugs, which is what they tend to be called, musician's earplugs, the ones that turn the volume down. If anyone's using those, uh, please do let us know which ones you're using and we will uh, we'll share it in the, in the chat. Um, so um, oh, it's a great question. Maybe people can uh, share how they do it. What kind of payment method do you take when DJing and how, says Liquid Metal. I'm just gonna leave that with the crowd and before the end of today, I'll read out some uh, some answers to that question. So Liquid Metal on YouTube, what kind of payment methods do you take, you as a DJ, uh, and how do you take those? Let me know, I'll read it out before the end. Um, so this is a good question, uh, lots of gear questions, but then again, we've had a lot of gear out and about today. Um, this is from Mark who says, can you recommend an LED light that may be used to light up the mixer section on my Prime 4. You can get, I don't know the brand names, but you can get lights on the end of um, USB plugs. You get a USB-A plug and a light, like a bendy light. And I bet one of those, if you plugged it, I haven't tried it, but I bet if you plug one of those into the USB socket, so you, have, you probably have your, your music on the SD card or on one of these. On the other one, I bet there'd be enough power on one of those to plug one of those in. And then you could have a really nice little LED light. Look for computer LED lights on Amazon and you'll find something that will plug into a USB socket. I've never thought of that before, but that's a really good idea. Um, so thanks for, for you know suggesting that and making me think about it. Um, this is from uh, Cypher Devine who says any, on Twitch, any suggestions on recovering lost files in Serato? I've tried the analyze function. There is a function in all DJ software for finding lost files. It's not analyzed, it's not analyzed that you want. Um, I can't remember how it works in Serato, but it is there. There is a function for doing it. I think you go to the files section. Let's just get Serato. I mean, it's a long time since I've done it, so I'm not going to pretend I've got this kind of like encyclopedia in my head, which knows everything because I patently haven't, but um, there is a way of doing it. So let's just get Serato open and we'll have a look together, see if we can figure it out. So um, I think if you go to the files section here, uh, there you go, relocate lost files. I knew there'd be a button there. So that button, so go to files. Lost files will be showing up here as um, red, which means you've moved the file since you told Serato about it. That's why that happens. So click files and then there's a relocate lost files button there. And that will, um, says you, so you can't read this on that screen because it's tiny, but it says at the bottom, you have no missing files in your library. That's because I have a nice, well-maintained library, but uh, that's where to do it. So uh, I love this because we get to discover things together. It's what it's all about. Um, we're live by the way, so if you've just joined us, it's me, Phil, here in the studio, just answering your DJing questions. Um, I always have to tell you, and today I'm, Definitely going to tell you because we've got the new graphic finally. I always have to tell you uh, about our gear guide. Oh, it, go, it goes black though. We'll have to sort that out. Um, <laughs> we'll sort it out. Um, so our new 2022-2023 um, version of our gear guide, uh, which is what that graphic showed you that was meant to, to lay nicely over the top of me, but needs a tweak. Um, so that's now available. So we have a guide that we publish every year which helps beginner DJs pick the right DJ gear. Uh, and you can have a copy of that guide. It's very, very simple to get it. Let me show you how. Uh, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website by going to digitaldjtips.com. When you get to digitaldjtips.com, uh, you will see get your free DJ gear guide and Amazon bestseller. Uh, yes, we won't only give you the gear guide when you click on that link there and become our latest member, 
joining is free. We'll give you a copy of our book. It's on Audible, it's on Kindle, it's on uh, it's in all good bookshops, uh, but I'll give you a copy of this for free just for joining Digital DJ Tips. But the most important reason to join Digital DJ Tips is to get our newsletter every week, every Tuesday, uh, our Tuesday Tips newsletter, which is the best place to get better at DJing because we've got news and reviews and features, free tutorials taken from our courses, mixes by our DJs, and remember our DJs include Jazzy Jeff and DJ Angelo and Laidback Luke, uh, plus your team, myself, Steve and Ben. Um, so it's a really good free newsletter and it's what we give you every week uh, once you join. So do come join us. Um, it's uh, digitaldjtips.com. Right, questions. Let's continue. We continue, as Pete Tong would say. Um, the next live question came from uh, Danny, who's just really pleased because Danny snagged a Prime Go, which we were talking about a few minutes ago, uh, from Sweetwater. It literally came in three days. Um, so that's great. Um, however, Treo says uh, the Prime 4 is crazy prices, even if you can get one. Um, so different stories going on here about the availability and the prices uh, of DJ gear at the moment. Um, so Lee says, I hear a whisper that Pioneer DJ has discontinued the DDJ400, which is their previous small record box DJ controller. Um, so is this true? And if so, can we expect a new controller to replace it anytime soon? I don't know if that's true uh, because I have no uh, sniff of any new controller to replace the DDJ400. So, you know, Pioneer DJs always had kind of two beginner DJ controllers, like one for Serato and one for its own software record box. The one for Serato was the DDJ SB3, which has been replaced. The SB3 has been replaced with this one. The little Rev1. Uh, Oh, let's get a close up on that for you, uh, which is a kind of like a more a party, open format, scratch DJ's controller, uh, which makes sense because Serato is the software that tends to appeal to hip hop turntablists and so on. Um, but the DDJ400 hasn't been replaced, so you would think it would be ripe for a replace at some point, wouldn't you? Uh, and the controller above it in the range is the DDJ Flex 6 which is a four channel, cheapo four channel controller, but nonetheless, it's got big jog wheels and so on. So maybe there's a DDJ Flex 4 or Flex 2 coming, which looks more like that one to replace the 400. This is all speculation, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, but if you can get a DDJ 400, uh, they're great. And the reason they're great is that the layout is very similar to the layout of um, a pro setup, um, so it copies the way pro gear looks and feels, even though it's only a small little plastic box, which is useful if you're starting to learn DJing, but one day you want to end up in a, uh, in, a, um, in a club using their gear, well, you're getting a little bit of the feel, like the controls tend to be in similar places, which isn't the case with all controllers. Anyway, um, no idea is the truth there, I don't know. Um, so do you have any advice, this is from Davey, now we've got a music question, thanks Davey. Uh, for separating the art from the artist, unfortunately there are great tunes out there made by not so great people. Uh, it's a big problem when taking requests, I guess. My view, and this is only my personal view, is if the track is good enough, no one gives a crap what the artist has been up to. If the track is pretty average anyway, then tread more carefully when playing tracks that uh, that are by an artist that's got a question mark over their name. Um, I think time heals all wounds, you know. No one cares if Beethoven had a bit of a dodgy sex life when it comes to playing his uh, symphonies and so on. Um, I'm not saying he did, I've got no idea, but you know what I mean, time heals all wounds. Um, it's, I think it's just a case by case basis and also what different countries and different states and different types of crowd have got different opinions. Uh, and different DJs have got different ways of approaching this. James Hype, our, our DJ James, He'll play anything, he doesn't care. Um, but other people have got you know, a, more, a more considered approach to it, I guess. So I'd say there's no right and wrong, uh, no right and wrong there, it's just, uh, it's just whatever you feel. Um, but look, let's be honest, um, there's not many artists that we're, we're gonna worry about. R. Kelly, maybe Michael Jackson, who else? Who else is, uh, has got themselves into a bit of bother when it comes to playing their records? Uh, what was, who was that EDM DJ who was homophobic? He did a song called, uh, oh, I can't remember. The Wall, that rings a bell, some East European guy, I can't remember, anyway. I, I heard that play the other day somewhere, you know, time heals lots of wounds. Um, good question though, and I don't have a, a, a solid answer to that. Thanks for that, Brian. 
Um, we are now uh, going to talk about the technical side of music and this comes from Brian. Brian says, I'm currently moving my collection to WAV from inferior low bitrate MP3. Do you have any advice re-tagging these as WAV does not allow metadata to be included? Thank you. Right, let's unpack this a bit and then we'll answer the question. Um, a WAV file is a lossless audio file. In other words, it sounds as good as the original audio. A, an MP3 is a lossy audio file, which means that an algorithm has been applied to the original audio to make the file many, many, many times smaller, but at the expense of, in theory, inaudible information. Stuff you wouldn't hear anyway, that's just been thrown away, like it's too, too low, too high. Um, there's certain parts of the song where there's not much going on, so you don't need the same bandwidth that you have when there's lots going on. All that is done in the background to give you a file that's much, much smaller, but that sounds indistinguish indistinguishable to a lot of people, certainly very similar to most people. But what is going on here is that Brian is going to say, no, I don't want any MP3s, I want WAV files. WAV files are a uh, purist format in that it's just the music. There's no artwork, there's no metadata around artist and title and key and all that stuff that can be stored with an mp3 can't be stored with a WAV file. So do you have any advice re-tagging these? So there's a couple of things here. The first thing is you don't have to use WAV. You could use FLAC, for instance, F-L-A-C, which is the same audio quality but gives you all the advantages of mp3 regarding tagging and metadata and artwork and so on. But the second thing is, most DJ software, and I haven't done a recent test with all the DJ software, but most DJ software, in fact, well, the truth is all DJ software has its own database about your music, all DJ software, because it needs to store variously things like BPM, waveform analysis, key analysis, your playlists and what tunes you put in them and so on. So, we looked at it earlier, when you move your music around outside of your DJ software, your DJ software forgets where it is. Because another thing it stores is where to find that file, it doesn't ever move your files around. So, because all DJ software has a database, with most DJ software, and this is a bit I haven't tested recently, but I'm pretty sure it's still true, uh, it will happily keep all that information for you. Um, and it will just associate it with the file. So it doesn't get stored with the file, but when you load your DJ software, it finds it all. So it might just be that it isn't a problem for you, Brian. It might just be that you can do all that stuff. Give it a try on your DJ software and see what happens. Um, or, as I say, use another lossless format that does let you do that, like FLAC. And the good news is you can convert from WAV to FLAC without losing any quality because they're both lossless audio formats. So, uh, so cool. Thank you for the question. Nice to have a couple of music questions there. Um, so, um, lots of you asking about new gear, but there ain't no new gear coming, not at the moment, because there's no silicon chips to put in the gear, and there's a war in Ukraine, and coronavirus has closed down big chunks of China. It still is. You know, one person gets coronavirus in a, in a neighborhood in China, and they close the whole thing down. And because the communities are gated, they literally won't let you out of the community. It's nothing like here. Last time coronavirus, last time it was mentioned here, I can't even remember. But, you know, China's where a lot of the chips are made, and it's not back to normal there yet. So for all these reasons, there's no silicon out there to stick in devices. So there is no new DJ gear coming uh, that we're hearing about at the moment. Um, so, um, Katazwi, Katazwi, I think, says, does Engine OS, which is what this DJ setup here runs, uh, as same with the Prime 2 and the Prime Go and the SC6000 and the Newmark Mixstream Pro, does Engine OS allow you to drop a track onto a loaded deck and continue to play the new track in time? Is there an option to turn this on? Right, so in other words, to have sync carry across, right? And I'm not sure if you can set it so that sync stays switched on. I can't remember. If someone can tell us, then please do so, and I will share that. Um, we are live for about another 10 minutes, because I think it's all my voice will handle today, people, so I do apologize. We're not here for a whole hour. We're gonna stop at 45 minutes. Uh, but I'm going to um, nonetheless plow through as many questions as we can. Um, Brooke says, is it worth getting Serato DJ Pro? It's quite expensive. It really is expensive, and it's gone up a lot recently. Yes, it is. 
if you are going to be playing DJ gigs and getting that money back. Otherwise, it's, I don't know, it's just a lot of money. Serato really has gone up a lot recently. Wait till Black Friday. I'm sure they'll have a sale on Black Friday. Uh, they want you to subscribe. They want you to pay for a subscription. So to, to actually buy it, it's, it's become pretty expensive. Um, so are you able to use pitch play mode in Engine? Uh, so this is Engine. The software that we um, are looking at here is Engine. Uh, but Engine is not software that you DJ with. This is just to prepare your music. And when you've prepared your music, you export it onto a USB drive and then you plug it into engine equipped equipment like this Prime 4 here. And then once you've done that, you load the tracks from it onto here. And the question is, is it possible to use pitch play? So pitch play is, I'm gonna try and plug this in now. USB, the rule with USBs, if you didn't know it, I'll tell you the rule with USBs. It takes three goes to plug them in. The first go, where you've got it the wrong way around. The second go, when you turn it around and try it that way, and you realize that that's the wrong way around too. And the third go, when you turn it back to the way you had it in the first place and realize that you were right all along. Am I right? So that was why it took me three goes there to plug the track in. Uh, right, so talking of tracks, let's load a track and talk about pitch play. So pitch play is the, in fact, let's just have a zoom in on there. Pitch play is the idea that this is the key of this track. Ed Sheeran's Bad Habits is in 10A, and that's what that's telling us. I'm not gonna play it because we'll get thrown off every network immediately for playing copyrighted music. So pitch play is when, rather than move the pitch control, so you can lock the key of the track, right? The key of the track is locked. I can unlock that, and if you look at the screen as I do this, you'll see the key's actually changing, right? And that makes sense because what I'm doing here is making the pitch go down and low and then it's going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, right? So that's what the speed control does. It doesn't only change the speed of the track, the tempo, but it changes the pitch. But if you lock the key by hitting the key lock button, well now that tempo won't change. That tempo will stay at 10A as I move this up and down. See the waveform is moving in and out to show that the track's moving, but the pitch is staying the same, 10A. So that means that this song would be slowing down or speeding up, but it wouldn't be getting lower or higher, which is very useful. But the question is, can you use pitch play? Now pitch play is another way of saying, no, I don't want to speed the track up or slow it down. Instead, what I want to change is the actual pitch. I want to make the track go higher or lower without having to speed it up or slow it down. And you can do that on this. It's really, really powerful. And the way you do it is by tapping the waveform there, at least, there we go. Um, and then you get these controls up here. And these controls up here let you move the pitch up and down. And it's telling me if I go down one note there, I'll be at 3A. If I go down one more note, I'll be at 8A. And then the same when we go up. So I can make tracks go up and down as I'm playing them. And you can do that to make them match tracks on the other decks and so on. Uh, really easily with engine equipped equipment like the Prime Four, which I have in front of me here now. It's a very powerful feature of it. So yes, the answer is that is possible uh, and it's pretty easy to do. Um, so a few people are talking about the price of Serato and saying just find a controller that bundles the full version of Serato, but none of them do anymore because even the full version of Serato doesn't have pitch and time, which ironically is the thing that does what I was just sh showing you there. Was that playing then? Could you hear that? If you could probably been thrown off Facebook. Um, anyway, um, uh, so yeah, there we go. Um, so a few people are saying that uh, USB 3 is the best for plugging into DJ gear because it's faster. That's true, but I don't think the CDJs care. I don't think the CDJs are clever enough uh, to be able to use USB 3. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they're good enough for that. Um, so... Uh, Christine is informing us about what the problem was with the microphones. I haven't been able to get a direct sound out at all with the mic output through the Denon. Uh, I'm running through a separate mixer. Is there a setup I'm missing? Well, you don't need a separate mixer. I'll just take that out while you're testing. Are you sure you're using uh, uh, dynamic microphones? You have to use dynamic microphones. Any microphone that needs power, like a condenser microphone, won't work. So maybe that's it. But obviously, without chatting to you properly, it's hard to hard to be able to tell you uh, exactly what the issue is there with your mics. But thank you. Um, uh, right, we're 
a few more minutes to answer a few more questions. Hello, Dr. Clara, by the way. Uh, a few more minutes to ask, uh, answer a few more questions. Uh, so I'm just going to try and pick some good ones. Lots of advice about uh, flash drives here. So I use Samsung, Samsung USB flash drives, says Matt. Uh, they work well with Pioneer. Um, and also you can use SD cards. So I tend to use SD cards. If it takes an SD card, the equipment you've got, because they, um, they're very good and they're less likely to get knocked out and so on. So I actually, thinking about it, use SD cards as well. Um, so uh, pay attention, says DJ Ginormous. Phil is dropping some golden nuggets here. Oh, well, thank you, DJ Ginormous. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, just going to answer, just gonna, I'm just going to pull a few more questions um, live from here. I'm just looking for things which uh, we haven't answered already. John, does anyone know why when I copy tracks to a USB drive inside a folder and then plug the USB drive into the Pioneer XDJRR, the folder appears to be empty? I've got no idea, John, as long as it's formatted FAT32. I think that should work. So maybe you're copying an alias rather than the track itself. Just guessing. But uh, if anyone's got any tips or knows exactly what's happening there, John's on YouTube, you could answer John there. Um, this is from Paul. This is a live streaming question. We're live streaming at the moment. So hey, let's answer a live streaming question. Uh, Paul says, uh, do you typically get higher resolution from HDMI um, on cameras? Then, than USB only. What do you guys use in the studio? Right, so if you've ever live streamed your DJ sets, this is gonna be useful to you. The, the truth is that there's a couple of ways of live streaming. You can plug in very simple webcams or even use the webcams on your phone or on your, uh, on your laptop or whatever uh, to go live. Now, if you use the cameras on your phone, they're absolutely brilliant. But if you use a camera that's built into your Laptop, they're not very good. Uh, even if you plug in a USB camera, like the kind of webcams that clip on the top, you know, that people use on Zoom, they're pretty good, pretty good, but they're not brilliant. And you need really good light and you need to position them carefully and so on and, and just experiment a bit. The best way uh, to, to get really good uh, results is to, that we found is to use expensive cameras, right? There's no mystery there. Uh, because if you use expensive cameras, like this is the most expensive camera in our studio that I'm talking to you on now, uh, you're going to get really good results from it. Not only the camera, because the sensors are expensive and the processing in the camera is good, but the lenses that you can use are, are going to be better too. So we use um, proper DSLR prime lenses uh, on our setups, which basically means that they can take an awful lot of light in. So this studio is actually very dark. Um, the reason this studio is dark is simple. It's so that when we show you stuff like this, you can see all the colors on the buttons, because if this studio was, was well lit, you'd never see the colors on these buttons, and you'd never see the colors on the screen like that. It would all be bleached out. I'd look quite good, and I'd look good on a cheap webcam, but none of this stuff would look good, right? So the, the beauty about using expensive cameras um, with HDMI outputs, which is what our cameras have got, and then using expensive converters to get them into your laptop for live streaming, is that you get really good quality. There's no way around that. We've tried everything. You know, over the half a decade we've been live streaming. We started off exactly as I said with cheap little webcams and phones and stuff and we've moved up and up and up and now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six cameras plus the, you know the, the stuff, there's your comments again, plus all the stuff coming in from camera, from, uh, from, from the feeds on our, on our computers and stuff as well. Um, and the answer to your question then is yes, if you use a decent DSLR camera with a decent lens on it and then use a proper converter to get from the HDMI output into your USB and into your computer, you will get the best results. But the second best way of getting really good results, honestly, just use any camera on a phone because cameras on phones are brilliant nowadays. And the best thing about that is as long as you get enough light, the best thing about that, you can keep hearing that song, can't you? I'm gonna turn that off. Actually, I don't think you can hear it. I don't know. Could you hear music then? No, you couldn't. I could see all the waveforms going off, but it's turned off on the console. Um, I'm jabbering. Um, so, yeah, we were talking about live streaming and talking about live streaming cameras. Uh, yeah, on phones, they've got really powerful processors in them. So that means that the, the picture is then made as good as possible by the phone, which is something no webcam will do for you. So. My best tip is if you don't like the stuff you're getting out of cheap webcams, 
any old phones, just you can get apps on your phones that will send a signal to your laptop for going live and you get really good results that way. Right, one or two more questions and then I've got to get out of here. This is a really good one and this is a performance question. You know, in our book uh, and in the way we teach, we divide DJing into five big areas. Gear, music, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself. There they are, all five areas. And we've done a lot of gear today. We've done a bit of music. We haven't done any techniques. Um, we haven't done any promoting yourself, but we're about to do a playing out question. So this is cool. So this playing out question from Nathan. I'm gonna make this our last question of the day because honestly, I need to stop talking. Um, says, uh, hey Phil, how would you deal with a headline DJ not mentioning names? Of course not, Nathan playing longer than their allotted set time. I personally think it's pretty unprofessional and I wouldn't do it, but how would you handle it? So I've booked hundreds of DJs. When I ran a nightclub full time, um, which I did for well over 10 years, I, I was the chief booker. I booked hundreds of DJs. Uh, some DJs turned out to be great friends, others turned out to be um, the type I think you're mentioning, Nathan. Um, my, the main thing I would do is never book them again and tell them why, so I've done that. Um, uh, but you've got to stay diplomatic and you've got to stay, uh, you've got to stay, um, see the bigger picture, right? And the bigger picture is not kicking off and arguing in the DJ booth and spoiling people's nights and, you know. Um, to me, it's, it's at the end of the night, look at what works and what didn't work and what didn't work, make sure it never happens again. I have had DJs who wouldn't get off, but normally it wasn't too long. It was like maybe they'd started a bit late so they wanted to play a bit longer, or they tried it on, but they just got told firmly to come off the decks, and they did. The way we used to DJ our nights was we had, because we couldn't afford big name DJs all the time at the, at the nights I promoted. Now I was also a DJ and I liked to play. Um, and my DJing partner liked to play as well. And actually it turned out that because we couldn't afford big DJs all the time, a lot of people were happy to come to listen to us and to our music. So when we booked a DJ, unless the DJ was good enough for that crowd, they wanted us back on anyway. And so we were always very, very clear with our DJs that you play the peak slot, but we start and end the night. And some DJs, most DJs were fine with that, but some didn't like it, but we just had to smile and be firm. And I can think of maybe two DJs out of all the DJs I ever booked who I wouldn't book again because they had their attitude was wrong. And only one of those was to do with set times. Another one was just something else. So, you know, most people will be okay if you're firm with them. Now, I want to end off today by sharing something with you because these are our rules for chats on these live streams. Keep calm and ask once. We are a no drama company and a no drama community. Capital letters, shouting, getting rude, and copy and pasting your questions more than once in the chat boxes on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch is not allowed. And if you do it, we simply won't answer your questions. But as you know, I've got hundreds of questions here I've not been able to get to. It's always the way. Uh, as you know, if you ask your question on Facebook, even though you might hate Facebook, I'm not Facebook's biggest fan, the beauty is that the questions you ask remain with the video afterwards. So my team will now go to the video recording of this on Facebook and answer as many of those questions as they can in order to help you guys and girls. So do, and also other people can help you as well. On YouTube and Twitch, on Twitch the whole thing disappears and on YouTube the questions down the chat box disappear um, and the video goes live and the comments open but all the questions have been lost. So do ask your questions on these on Facebook if you can. And I've just got one more tip for you. If you love this kind of live Q and A, um, but you want your questions answered and you want to know that you ask something you are gonna get dealt with. The best thing to do is to become a member of Student Hub. Now Student Hub is our Facebook group for, for course owners only. And Student Hub is free to everyone who joins um, Digital DJ Tips and buys a DJ course. Now you can buy a, a simple little course or you can buy our biggest courses. You still get access to Student Hub. Uh, not only do you then get our live shows in there, which instead of having a few thousand people we'll have 50 people on them or something and we can answer all your show, all your questions, but um, you get to get into Student Hub, which is a Facebook group like no other. It's welcoming, it's for beginners, intermediate and advanced DJs. We're in there and our best students are in there as well. So if you're interested, if you're interested in taking it a step further, head to Digital DJ Tips, click on the 
DJ courses tab at the top and scroll down and there's 26 courses here. I'm sure something will be right for you. Grab yourself a course and the next thing we do, we'll be emailing you to welcome you to our community into your new course and to give you a login for Student Hub, the best student group in the world. I promise you. Right, so I'm gonna go away now and suck a throat lozenge or something, or just stop talking. Um, I have to go to an open day for my, my daughter, so hopefully the teachers will do the talking and we'll just sit there and do the nodding. Um, and I will be back again next Tuesday for our Tuesday Tips live show, the accompanying show to the email newsletter I told you about that you get when you join Digital DJ Tips. So I'll be back next Tuesday um, at 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern for that. And then this time next week, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern again for Thursday Q&A Live, all your questions answered. I'm out here, so all that's left for me to say uh, from the studio is get good, get out there, make the moments. Thank you for being with me today, humbled as ever, uh, and I'll see you at one of those shows hopefully very soon. Uh, till then then, goodbye.